title of the uh, talk will be The Lost Records of the Druids, if they were ever lost. Or maybe we simply didn't have the key to translate these strange inscriptions. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks to um, the new gained um, tools of uh, comparative studies, uh, such as linguistics, uh, mythology, uh, history, and of course, uh, comparing uh, artifacts, different uh, scripts, writing, we now have a better idea um, on how um, the ancient Celts, and especially the Druids, how they uh, dealt with um, writing and uh, their peculiar way of doing so, which wasn't exactly the same as, let's say, that of the uh, Romans or the Greeks, of course, and even other groups uh, such as um, the, um, the Hebrews or the Canaanites or the Philistines on the Semitic side. Most evidently, uh, the, uh, the Celts were Indo-European, so they're form of writing uh, was uh, comparable to uh, other uh, ancient um, societies, um, as we know, uh, especially the Etruscans, the, um, the Germanic tribes. And so um, if we um, trust uh, some of the uh, scholars and experts of the field, you know, um, the, the main belief was that the, um, the Celts and the Jews in particular never left any inscription or they simply um, did not write or did not use writing uh, to record uh, their thoughts or their history or their annals or any other um, important, uh, let's say, subject matter. Um, and as uh, Peter uh, Beresford Ellis, uh, you know, the uh, British um, scholar, um, once wrote, he says, um, as the uh, ancient Celts did not leave us written records of their beliefs in a systematic form, some have expressed the belief that in, it is impossible to summon the uh, pre-Christian Celtic religion from the grave and have uh, simply left uh, the field uh, to those who have conjured the inventions of the 17th, 18th, 19th century romantics to claim all man manner of weird rituals for the ancient Celts. However, when uh, we examine uh, the evidence, uh, there is much uh, we know about the, uh, the Celtic religion. Uh, yes, th that is so true. Uh, uh, there is much to learn, let's say, from the Irish texts and, and also from what the classical authors uh, had to say about these things. Um, but again, now, uh, let's say in uh, 2021, we have um, a better grasp of, um, let's say, the uh, Celtic um, uh, written records, especially those of um, uh, Iberian, um, the Iberian Peninsula, uh, also, um, let's say, the uh, Gallic um, inscriptions that we have in France, which uh, the uh, key to uh, translating them, them are, is very recent, uh, you know, of course, with the uh, Iberian records and even more so with the uh, Gallic record. So um, this was um, the work of um, um, specialists who, who have endeavored uh, uh, thoroughly, uh, very um, uh, long hours uh, to uh, crack the code, and, and especially with the Iberian uh, material, since there were different um, um, versions of this same script, the Iberian script. But as for the uh, Gallic records, um, the uh, script uh, seems to be uh, well codified, and um, we find it um, around the um, the Alpine, Alpine regions and, and also in the Massif Central around Auvergne, especially uh, uh, as uh, uh, for the uh, Glosel site, you know, in Glosel uh, Ferrière uh, in France. And so um, the uh, Glosel uh, records. Um, were quite a mystery for, for very long, and, and it took a while before someone was able to crack the code. So the, um, the Gallic uh, script was cracked by a Swiss uh, epigrapher uh, named um, Hans Rudolf Hitz, uh, 
and uh, Professor Hitz was uh, the first to be able to um, uh, read uh, the Glozel uh, um, tablets in the proper Gallic language. Uh, of course, uh, for a long time, most of the people who had a look at them, the, since these were, of course, from the start declared fakes, uh, they thought they were prehistoric, but uh, through uh, thermal lum luminescence, it was uh, found that they dated uh, to the um, uh, independent uh, Gallic uh, period, um, that is around the um, end of the Hallstatt, the uh, beginning of Latin, and um, so around um, the second uh, century uh, uh, before uh, our uh, era, and so uh, the, the Christian era. The Glosel texts, the Glosel texts are very long uh, inscriptions, and they, they they read very well. They they compare also well with other uh, um, inscriptions found in Auvergne, uh, not too far away. Uh, in uh, Chamalière and uh, also um, around L'Hospitalet, uh, Le Larzac, and um, these uh, are also these are um, let's say they're in cursive Latin, uh, they're Gallo-Roman, and these are very long texts in Gallic also. Uh, but the uh, the Glosel uh, tablets are um, pre. Uh, the uh, Roman invasion, and they 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 are very 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 um, uh, eloquent uh, as for let's say to understand the, the basic uh, beliefs. Uh, there are things uh, pertaining to uh, the gods, uh, to rituals, uh, to the relationship um, between um, uh, the uh, such notions as uh, life and death and um, eschatology. All of these things. And uh, uh, other um, interesting uh, cosmographic uh, or cosmological um, considerations, you know, uh, these are all contained in, in the um, uh, in these uh, Glozel records. Uh, and uh, of course, also we we have a, a good um, um, a number of um, uh, different. Um, Theonyms and mythonyms uh, that are com that compare well with other uh, inscriptions, uh, epigraphic finds that we have from Gaul uh, and elsewhere, and uh, the names uh, compare very well. And also, there are so many things that we really didn't know uh, about uh, spe specific details. Uh, of course, you can have uh, Gallo-Roman uh, type of inscriptions with um, god names and goddesses and and and. But not, but you don't have, let's say, the context, uh, the, uh, the the idea of what was going on, uh, what was the devotion to these uh, these entities, you know, and this we have on uh, the Glosel tablets, uh, very good uh, uh, description of the different gods and what they did, and and also um, so some of the things. Um, compare well with, um, you know, things that only can be checked uh, with um, the uh, Vedic um, or, let's say, Puranic and um, Upanishads uh, of India. Uh, there are specific details there that uh, you can find in the Gallic uh, inscriptions that uh, you don't have elsewhere. Uh, and these are th things that we'll get to, to see. Um, and uh, of course, um, there are um, a number of things that we need to uh, verify uh, first, uh, and uh, before we um, uh, give you uh, the uh, details on the artifacts, uh, the the translations, and, and all of these things that we uh, we will see uh, later on. After their discovery, the Iberian stones remained a mystery until 1922 when the Spanish historian Manuel Gómez Marino Martínez decided to compare his northeastern finds with Roman period coin legends. These coins were known to bear historical and place names known from classical sources. His decipherment was refined by Joan Maluca de Motes in 1968. What was revealed through the reading of these inscriptions was the comprehension of a sophisticated and highly organized Celtic civilization. Those who have attempted to decode the Glosal tablets did so using the Phoenician alphabet. All it yielded was gibberish. In 1997, Hans Rudolf Hitz successfully cracked the code and identified the script as Celtic.
Indeed, if there ever was a match to Glossalian, it had to be with the Iberian syllabaries. And so um, one important, uh, let's say, one important um, uh, author who really did guess at these things beforehand, uh, some kind of a prophet, I would say, uh, was a uh, Professor uh, G.A. McCulloch, uh, who was the first uh, scholar to um, understand uh, Kaiser's comment, um, uh, you know, in Caesar and his war commentaries. Uh, uh, the, um, the idea, the notion that, uh, you know, Caesar was mentioning that the, 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 the Druids did not uh, cons consign write um, important matters. Uh, they used the Greek alphabet and they um, uh, really uh, were uh, not very um, uh, very good at recording things. And this, uh, this, um, uh, this has been c contradicted completely uh, with what we have now uh, uh, with the uh, Celtiberian, uh, the Iberian uh, texts, uh, Lusitanian, uh, uh, Tartessian, uh, Gallic, and the Glozel inscriptions and all of this. So uh, all of this has been a bit contradicted. Uh, so here's what uh, um, John A. McCulloch uh, in 1911 wrote. This is quite um, uh, prophetic. Uh, he says, uh, Some Druids, for example in the south of Gaul, may have had access to classical learning, and Caesar speaks of the use of Greek characters among them. This could hardly have been general, and in any case must have superseded the use of a native script, to which the use of Ogham's in Ireland, and perhaps also in Gaul, was supplementary. The Irish Druids may have written books, for King Logair desired that St. Patrick's books and those of the Druids should be submitted to the ordeal by water as a test of their owner's claims. Some Druids, for example, in the south of Gaul, may have had access to classical learning. And uh, Caesar speaks uh, of um, the use of Greek characters among them. They are said there to learn by art a great number of verses. Accordingly, some remain in the course of training 20 years. Nor do they regard it lawful to commit this to writing, though in almost all other matters, in their public and private transactions, they use Greek characters. Kaiser, did you say that they use, they Greek, use characters? Greek characters? They use Greek characters. They use Greek characters. That practice they seem to me to have adopted for two reasons, because they neither desire their doctrines to be divulged among the mass of the people. Nor those who learn to devote themselves the less to the efforts of memory, relying on writing, since it generally occurs to most men, that, in their dependence on writing, they relax their diligence in learning thoroughly, and their employment of the memory. This could hardly have been general, and in any case must have uh, superseded the use of uh, a native script native script to which the use of Owens in Ireland and perhaps also in Gaul was supplementary. The Irish Druids may have writ had written books uh, for King uh, Loguer uh, desired that St. Patrick, uh, uh, Patrick's books and those of the Druids would be submitted uh, to the ordeal by water as a test of their uh, omen owner's claims. Mm -hmm.
Uh, some Druids, uh, for example, in the south of Gaul, may have had access to classical uh, learning. And um, Caesar speaks of the use of Greek characters uh, among them. Uh, this could hardly have been general and in any case uh, must have superseded the use of uh, native script to which uh, the use of oems in Ireland and perhaps uh, also in Gaul uh, was supplementary. Uh, the Irish uh, Druids may have had written books for a loger uh, desired that St. Patrick, uh, St. Patrick's books and those of the Druids uh, should be submitted to, to the ordeal uh, by water as a test of uh, their owner's uh, claims. Uh, now that is interesting. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, Druids were always uh, throwing things in water and, and in fire and putting everything to the test of the elements. Uh, and so uh, this uh, claim that Patrick would have endured this uh, test of the Druids and uh, come out uh, um, uh, as, uh, you know, uh, winning uh, uh, this uh, challenge upon the Druids uh, is uh, quite ridiculous uh, because um, uh, the Druids uh, wrote on hard matter, uh, stone, uh, wood, and uh, maybe uh, some of the, uh, the fid shells and, um, you know, the oems would have probably burnt in, in a fire uh, ordeal, but uh, not in water. And, the, the, of course, uh, the, the bricks would have uh, survived the fire <laughs> or, uh, let's say, uh, you know, clay bricks or uh, stone uh, engraving ohms on stone would have survived also. So this, um, of course, is, uh, is a boast and uh, does not uh, conform to, um, let's say, a true historic uh, uh, account of what really happened. Uh, so w what did happen uh, to the, uh, these Irish uh, Druids books? Um, uh, is of course uh, possible. It's 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 possible that uh, the Christian monks did destroy them uh, in some other fashion. So uh, this is um, probably what happened, uh, and so uh, this uh, gives you an idea of um, what uh, you know the the conflicts were between the uh, the sages of antiquity and and the the the, the new uh, religious zealots uh, of Christianity. in this clip uh, the mention of the god Jesus uh, by the druid of uh, Werkin Getoris. Uh, it's uh, interesting also to note that um, uh, Werkin Getoris was uh, from Auvergne and uh, this is not too far from uh, the Glosel site uh, where we also find the mention of uh, the god Jesus and of course uh, on the uh, Pilier des Notes uh, of Paris uh, there is a depiction of the god Jesus, a very famous depiction uh, that you have uh, here in uh, illustration. The tablet, the mention that Jesus proceeds from a group of eight gods. Another uh, very interesting um, uh, Glosel stone uh, or tablet, a uh, brick uh, from um, the, the same site um, is a dedication to the god Jesus um, and in, in which he is qualified as being uh, one of the eight um, canai and um, this, of course, is a, it brings us more, um, as I was mentioning, uh, uh, to uh, the uh, theological considerations of the god Jesus. Um, if we read uh, the stone, um, we get um, this reading, uh, this Gallic reading, um, which um, reads as follows. Dibinao Ezu, Octude Ikaki, Canai, 
Uksi Ikti, which we have seen before, which means uh, luminous, that is Ezus, coming from the eight gods of Yekos, the well-being, the Kanai, the pleasing ones, these above that all that is below. So uh, this mention of Ezus proceeds from a group of eight gods, phrasing, um, uh, and this um, brings us also uh, close to um, a notion that we find in Vedism. And these are the eight deities, uh, the Ashta, uh, Dik uh, Palas, uh, ruling over the um, eight half uh, quadrants of the universe. Uh, the chief gods uh, are uh, in the, the Vedic texts, uh, Indra, Yama, Varuna, Kubera, who govern uh, the east, south, and west. And uh, the northern sectors uh, and intermediate zones are ruled by Agni, uh, Nikti, uh, Vayu, and Ishana. So, uh, to comment on this, uh, if we turn to uh, Lucan's uh, Farsalia, um, he paired uh, Ezus uh, with uh, the gods uh, Tutatis and uh, Taranis, uh, which he labeled as horrid, savage, and cruel. Uh, this says more about the dis disdain of um, the Roman scholars uh, for uh, Celtic devotion um, than uh, for the true beliefs of, of the, the, the Gallic tribes. And from this statement of Lucan, we can only um, conclude that Jesus formed a triad with uh, these uh, other major gods. Um, that is, uh, Taranis as Jupiter, Tutatis as Mars, and Jesus as Silvanus, um, the um, forest uh, god in Roman in interpretation. Uh, more correctly, um, these would uh, be viewed as uh, sky gods, uh, Taranis, uh, the storm god, Tutatis, the war god, and Jesus, a wind god. So uh, now we uh, understand that Jesus was part of a larger group of uh, gods uh, called uh, the Kanai, the pleasant ones. And if we turn to uh, Vedism uh, again, we have uh, the Ashta, uh, Dikpalas, uh, the eight wind gods who rule over uh, the quadrants of the sky vault. And uh, we have uh, Varuna as a cognate of Taranis, uh, Indra, is similar to Tutatis, uh, Tutatis, uh, uh, Lug, or again uh, Lugus um, or Lu. Uh, Yama, the twin, uh, corresponds to the Greek uh, Dioscori, uh, who were uh, the uh, Celtiberian uh, Lugues. So then uh, Vayu, the wind uh, god, can be identified uh, to Isus, the breath. As for the identity of the others, we can only, again, speculate. Uh, but then if we try a bit harder and um, compare the theonyms, we have Agni uh, as Aidus, uh, equ equivalent to the Irish Aid. Uh, Kubera, the mountain god uh, of mines and wealth, can be likened to the uh, Gallic uh, Ukuetis, uh, the quencher, a uh, husband of uh, Bergusia, the mountaineer, the mountain goddess. Ishana, the powerful lord, could be uh, Sukelos, uh, the good striker, the lucky striker. As for uh, the Gallic equivalent of uh, Nikti, um, also given as Nirti, disorder, and uh, Rakshasa, the slayer, a demon god. Uh, yeah, speculate on this and uh, think of the uh, Irish go god uh, Balor, uh, the luminescent. Okay, all of this now is very fine. Uh, the uh, critically minded will tell me, uh, well, that, what about the Druids? Um, there is, uh, apart from the mentions in, in the uh, classical texts and uh, the, uh, the Irish and uh, Welsh myths, um, there, or the Irish texts, there isn't much to say uh, about the Gallic Druids. Um, have, have we found any inscription, uh, uh, epigraphic finds of any sort um, where the Druids are mentioned uh, or the mention of the word Druid uh, is found. Uh, uh, you know, th this is uh, something that often pops up, uh, you know, in the um, uh, in academia and uh, many of the, uh, the critiques will say, yes, but uh, the, if the Druids had writing, if they wrote, uh, how come we find nothing, uh, you know, bearing the mention of Druids? And um, so, 
let, let's uh, understand that um, the uh, most of the epigraphic finds are uh, Gallo-Roman and they are uh, in um, uh, written in uh, uh, the Latin alphabet and um, they're in or they're in uh, Italic uh, Roman cursive, and so um, this uh, uh, is um, pretty much uh, you know. Uh, the critique that we find often uh, with the uh, with those who, who, who uh, criticize uh, the existence of druids in, in, in uh, outside of Ireland or or Britain, uh, but we do uh, we do find uh, the the mention of druids, and this is uh, something that we uh, also learn from the um, the uh, these old stones. Uh, we have a few examples, uh, of course, um, uh, one from Glozell. Uh, so there's the mention of Druid on uh, a Glozell uh, brick, um, considering the importance of the role of Druids in Celtic uh, society, uh, it would be surprising uh, not to find uh, any mention of them uh, in the Glozell writings. And this mention seems to strengthen the notion that um, during the time of the Gallic independence, the Druids were proud uh, of their elitist status and were not afraid to uh, mention themselves, uh, to put themselves into the text. So we have one um, interesting uh, stone uh, uh, which reads uh, as follows Eneiakayo uds ka ska i druide iwenia ske nabu keskeat kti kuno de which um, reads as follows. Um, uh, to the new gain health of Udskakska, uh, having water, this one, which is a, a feminine theonym of a water uh, goddess, uh, probably a goddess of sources and, um, and uh, uh, brooks. Uh, this one, uh, to the Druid, Iwenia, the youth, also a, f a, f a feminine uh, personal name, with a break in this place, shadow vapor coming from above by Kuno de Kuno Devos. Another example that I will give you is uh, this um, stone, uh, commemorative stone found um, in uh, in Spain, and it's from the Lusitanian uh, cultural area, and it's in uh, Roman uh, letters, and it's uh, written in the, a Lusitanian, uh, which many many uh, have speculated on the Lusitanian language. I think that it's uh, Indo-European, but is not uh, of Celtic origin, could be um, Italo-Celtic. Um, but uh, as we find, it's uh, most likely, as Monard has, um, has um, uh, postulated, that it's um, uh, a form of uh, Old Celtic, um, very close to um, the uh, Proto-Celtic. And so here's what it reads. Isaici di RVTV de Carle and Tommy in Dinak. Omme. Isai kid rueti weed Carlae entum in di na. Om. Om. And then with a few. The sound is broken and there's a, an M. So um, here is um, the interpretation of it. Um, so um, of uh, 
E cycles of druidry, the quality of the, the quality of the oak regarding the race, and also not more of who, where there is a break there is uh, where it seems to have been chipped off. And so, uh, of E cycles, E cycles is um, a um, a youth god, a god of fertility and health, and. And then, then we have um, uh, the name um, Carlayantum, which uh, is a place name. Uh, in old Celtic, it would have had read uh, Anton. But this Anton, uh, as for um, endings uh, of place names, uh, uh, as opposed to the Gallic Anton, uh, this is only a, a variant, you know. It's not something that is uh, very difficult. We also find it in uh, later uh, Gallic, which came under the uh, pressure of of, of Latin uh, in the during the Gallo Roman period. So um, it's um, probably uh, due to the fact that uh, in um, Iberia the uh, the uh, Celtiberians and the Lusitanians were. Um, uh, under the influence of the Romans a lot earlier than in Gaul, so this explains a, a bit. Okay, and that is uh, the second example where we have the mention of uh, Druids. But there are also other stones that mention, um, and inscriptions that mention bards and midwives uh, who were all uh, part of the um, uh, Druid class. So let's have a look at these. <laughs> Here's a stone um, dedicated to a midwife we have seen uh, with uh, Widikau, uh, uh, Widikawa, the, uh, the, the, the tenth, uh, the, the midwife. Um, okay, this one here mentions the, uh, the Gallic uh, inscription of um, Kaya Atetala Idunika Akizoea, Akizoea, which means um, Kaya Atelat. Atelata, uh, which means Kaya Atelata, that's the name, the midwife and pretty face. So this is dedicated uh, in, uh, as in uh, commemorating the uh, woman, uh, 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 Druidess, uh, a midwife, who was called uh, Kaya Atelata.
this uh, lead plate here uh, called um, the Chamalière uh, uh, inscription uh, was discovered in uh, 1971 um, in uh, Puy-de-Dôme, um, town of, of Chamalière, uh, during the excavations at the Source de la Roche. Um, so this um, Chamalière uh, village is not too far from uh, Clermont-Ferrand in Auvergne. And it is um, a long uh, old Celtic inscription um, in uh, Latin script um, on this uh, 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 flat lead plate measuring about six by four centimeters. Um, the Chamalière uh, lead plate, uh, along with uh, those found near uh, Larzac, um, are some of the uh, rarest and longest uh, mentions um, in, in Old Gallic. Therefore, uh, these are testimonies uh, not only uh, to the understanding of the uh, ancient continental uh, Celts, uh, but also for the uh, legacy of um, the, um, the passage between the uh, Druidical period and um, the um, Gallo-Roman uh, priest, priesthood period. So this is a, a, a typical, very um, Druidic type in invocation um, to Gaulish uh, deities such as Maponos, uh, Artios, and uh, Lugus. Um, and this uh, casts no doubt as to uh, the fact that it's very, it, it, it's, it's uh, essentially uh, a uh, Celtic religious uh, artifact. And it's not uh, really uh, something that would be, let's say, more of uh, the uh, Romanized um, version uh, that we would find uh, later on. So without further ado, here is uh, the plate itself. <laughs> Lugus Teorix, Lugus Sudeus, 
Glanem, Gnatos, Ritios, Pempe, Penos, Emitu, Lugus Gobans, Kanamitu, Lugus Batus, Malamitu, Granos, Uramon, Elkunios, Lucetios, Ariakos, Ualuatie, Esitod, Lugus Ogmios, Lugus Oluidios, Lugus Legis, Godiami Tu, Lugus Vitus Lanos, Glanemi, Magalos, Druis, Ategnion, Iacitarios, Esitod, Rigisamos, Gnatos, Oinakos, Tigernos, Ulatos, Oinotamos, Imbetoinos, Egeslos, Stromen, Esitod, Lugus Bratus, Glanemi, Utuatio, Uatis, Lamaontios, Lamargantios, Bardos, Bocatos, Moritex, Renacos, Carbantarios, Esitod, Lugus Vinos, Lugus Beuacos, Lugus Balcos, Donese. se bina nom brictom in eiano manuana sananderan ina brictom uid luias uid iluas tigontias. So ad saxona seuer im tersionic nim lidsatim liciatim eianum uodui uoderce. Lunget. Utoni de poncniti chi sintor sies du scelinazia in eiano manuana esi andernados brictom banona flatucias. Pol la dona potiti aia, duxta aiera diegias potita matir paulias. Eti che iotinios cue rufena casta dona uonus coetic diligentir. Ce ulescion ignoma ucitic ni materem potiti ulatucia rate banonias ne incitas biontutu indas emme nas ueronadas brictas lissina. Ue seuerim licina ue, tersionic nimci abitio pritum bi e utu semnas rate seuera tersionic innea. Ne incitas biontutus, duanatia ne pionda in corsonda donicon incarata. A senit connectos onda bocca ne ne rionti. Onda bocca. Ne combarnau non ponch nitic sintor si e sei anepi. Andix ne lissatim. Ne lissatim. Ne rodatim. Bion tutu semna nom sagisciontias semna nom sagisciontias seuerim. Lissatim liciatim anandonia macolutu. 
U. Tani tandognam da bocca di omne. Aia, cicena nishan co bue teta li teta atias Wolson ponne antumnos. Nepon nes lisciazia ne osuo de ne wodercos. Nepon su. Bion tutu semna nomad saxona do cos sue peti digio si es peti sagisciontias seuer in tersioni cienea. Lissatim. San Andonia Brictontias. Asenit connecto son da bocca nenerionti. Onda boca, ne combarnau non ponce nitic sintor si e sei anepi. Andix ne lissatim, ne lisciatim, ne rodatim. Bion tutu semna nomad saxona do cos sue peti digio si es peti sagisciontas seuer in tersioni cienea. Lissatim. San Andonia Brictontias. This is just to give you an idea of uh, the many um, inscriptions that we have in, in Old Celtic. And of course, this is not the uh, extensive list. Uh, uh, this is just a, a few examples um, uh, that I have collected for you. And so, of course, there is much more and we, we can draw much more um, from the, these stones, uh, from these inscriptions uh, or these lead plates than, than uh, just uh, the few mentions that I have here. Uh, so I hope that this has uh, helped you understand that um, it's not a complete uh, uh, collection of um, the lost records of the Druids, so there would be a lot more for you uh, to read uh, if, uh, let's say, uh, you, you go through uh, the, uh, the internet and you, uh, you, you glean and you pick whatever you have uh, uh, from one culture to another, uh, there would be uh, a lot more to, uh, let's say, uh, analyze. So um, I hope you enjoyed. All for now. Goodbye.